All right. So, um, I probably should have changed shirts. Yeah. Okay, I'm wearing the same shirt. Guess what? We filmed two of these at a time. Ooh, big surprise. Okay, shot. Get over it. So, um, the new book is available on Amazon now. And this, uh, I'm going to be making audio versions of book two and three. So, those of you that like to listen to audio books, since it's a memoir, I'll narrate these books as well. And I'm going to get really good at it. So, those are going to be good. But, hey, uh, I've rounded out and just about finished my memoir series. So, order it now on Amazon. And if you want a package deal where it's signed and you get some pretty bookmarks and all that stuff, then order it off my website, which is don'tcallmejupiter.com. So we are talking about the yellow bus. I'm coming to you from my brown beige camper, which is very close to our yellow bus. And um, John just drove it home. Mom told us there's an us in bus. I'm figuring I kind of like the bus. It's just embarrassing because I live in Davis. My friends don't know I'm a hippie, so I just plan to duck until we're out of town. While the bus is being transformed, my mother is recreating herself. She takes up painting and sculpting with clay. She starts beading her own jewelry and makes purses that my sisters love. She sands and repaints the furniture in bright colors. She brings home books on reincarnation, perientology, astrology, extrasensory perception, the Bermuda Triangle, telekinesis, astro projection, tarot cards, and pyramid power. She begins cooking with organic foods and introduces us to tofu, bean sprouts, brown rice, wheat germ, soy powder, and sweets made with carob and honey instead of chocolate and sugar. John tolerates her various exploration. He eats the organic food she makes. He doesn't comment on the thrift store clothes she now prefers. He doesn't ask her about her unusual books. They fight less because they ignore each other more. What you eat will change your entire life, my mother tells me. Did you know that you can live off nothing but tofu and alfalfa sprouts? Uh, I love food. Why would I want to do that? I think Mother Nature wants me to be a vegetarian, she tells me. Well, the next time you see Mother Nature, tell her that I'm still eating meat. Oh, honey, I am your Mother Nature, and with a little time, I will change your mind. You'll see. All I can do is smile and laugh at the situation. My mother, she can be so weird, distant, self-absorbed, eccentric, and yet so lovable at the same time. Moving on to the next chapter, we are on um, 11. This is January 8th, 1997. Dr. Robin and I have had a two-week break during Christmas and New Year's. Every New Year's is equally different and the same. I take a moment to reflect on the prior year and cast my hopes on the next. Last year was a nightmare. This year just has to be better. The pause in our sessions hasn't changed our formalities or how quickly I'm able to pick up where I left off and dive into the next chapter of the past. I peek into the mirror to see the reflection outside. Then I close my eyes and I think about the last few days of 1974. It seems like that was a million years ago, but as I settle into the chair and visualize myself in Cliff's garage, it also seems like it just happened yesterday. It's a flashback. On the second to the last day of 1974, I feel absolutely spoiled. I've had the entire house all to myself for the last three days, and it's been like heaven. You don't appreciate little things like windows, light, heat, carpet, drywall, privacy, music, and stupid TV shows until you've gone without them for a while. My only responsibilities are to feed the dog, water the pot plants, and finish cleaning up from the acid party. I've cranked up the heat and stripped down to my underwear. I'm sprawled out on the living room floor with my feet propped up against the wall that still has cellophane stuck to it. I'm blissfully relaxed and perfectly content just to stare at my bare feet. Feet are weird. If you look at anyone's feet too long, including your own, you'll come to the same conclusion. I must have seen too many movies. First I see my own feet hovering overhead, and then my brain performs a match dissolve to my mother's feet. They're not quite bare though, because her feet are in Birkenstocks. My mother ordered them from the Whole Earth catalog, thus dropping the bar in funky looking footwear to a whole new low. Nobody had shoes like these in Davis yet. I'm willing to bet she was among the first people in North America to wear these German strap-on attachable hooves. To me, they came from Middle Earth, something a hobbit would wear to stroll the Shire. They instantly become her favorite shoes. 
Birkenstocks and Birkenstocks with socks. I can't picture her feet any other way. It was shortly after she adopted Burks that I noticed another change she made. She no longer shaves her armpits or legs. I don't recall this being a gradual transition. One day she just had a lot more hair growing out of her body. So you don't shave anymore? I ask, my voice climbing with each word. Nope. Are you ever going to? Nope. She's changing even more on the inside. She becomes more headstrong and enjoys defending her ever-evolving beliefs with more passion, much like Peggy. John, for the most part, elects to disengage. He doesn't agree with her ideas, but he no longer shoots them down like he used to either. As I get older, I'm less concerned with the state of my parents' relationship. They still fight occasionally, but I've either gotten used to it or they're not fighting as hard. As far as I know, there are some things... As far as I know, there have been no more affairs on my mother's part. So, things are good in my little world, which revol revolves around school, Miss Gibbs, Ms. Gibbs, and Gilligan's Island. That'll do it for today. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next edition of Page Turning Tuesdays with Tom. Thank you. Bye.